Hello there, this is just a very short video for me to walk through some things that I've been testing in Copilot, specifically for Power BI when it's asking data questions of a semantic model or report. Some of the things I've seen that I think are interesting and useful. So not only for people who are using Copilot to ask questions, but also people who make semantic models or reports where users are expected to use Copilot to ask data questions about them. So the three things I want to show is that first of all, seemingly small and innocuous changes or you know non-functional changes to the prompt can result in functionally different results that you get from copilot in ways that you might not necessarily expect and two that when you are getting a result back from copilot that you now can open up an exploration if you have build permissions to further explore that result i really like this change because i think that this is an exploratory experience, being able to ask questions of the data in natural language. And the third thing I want to show is that when you publish a report and you give people access to that report, and for example, they can use Copilot, they can access fields that are not necessarily in that report, but also in your semantic model. So if you have tables and columns that you don't want them to be able to see, but they're not hidden and you don't have data security on these things, they might be able to see them using Copilot. So let's walk through these three things very, very quickly. So we have a simple report here looking at the month to date sales, sales versus target. We see a trend, we have a breakdown by region. We're highlighting you know, key areas where we're off as well as key accounts, customer key accounts. Now looking at this as a business user, we might want to explore the data farther. And one of the ways we can do that now is with Copilot, we can ask data questions of the reporter model. So we can ask, for example, starting off with something very simple, which is a good thing to do, so we can kind of validate it. So what we're going to ask, uh, what was the turnover uh, for August 2021 in euros? Okay, so simple question, we're just trying to find out what was the turnover for August 2021 in euros? And we see that we get some rather strange results here. It's filtering to August 2024 and date is in 2021. So these two things are mutually exclusive, which is why we get a blank, but it's also not filtering to the currency of euros. Now, where would you start if you wanted to improve the results you're getting from Copilot in this case? If a user complains and says, hey, it doesn't work, you make a change in the semantic model, you, you make a change in the prompt, advise the user. Well, one thing you might think of is turnover, okay? Turnover is not what we're calling it here, we're calling it gross sales, but we've already accounted for that because we have done some linguistic modeling. So if you click on Q&A setup, you can set up synonyms. So in this case, we can make sure that any measures called gross sales are also recognized by the user as by Copilot when the user says turnover. So that's already done and we can see that Copilot is using the correct measure, but the filtering is wrong. Now you might tell the user to be more specific, to use the words filtering and stuff like this, but actually in my testing, what produces the best result is by saying, what was the total turnover? And by just adding that one word, we're able to now get the correct result, which we can actually validate in our report by changing to 2021 and we can see that result here and again it's recommended that you start off with you know or advise users to start off with a simple query that they can validate in that same report just to make sure that you know they're sure that copilot's giving them the right thing it's an easy way to do the validation because it's side by side so again this is just demonstrating that a seemingly innocuous change to the prompt something you wouldn't immediately think of especially if you're not a native english speaker uh, can produce functionally different results. In this case, altering the filters that are being applied. So it's important to kind of think more about language in the context of the uh, input in this case, and which words we could add or change, even prepositions, like saying August, uh, for August, instead of saying for, we might think about saying in, or what was, what is the total turnover, these kind of changes can have a meaningful functional impact on the type of results you're getting back from Copilot. So that's the first thing I wanted to show. And you can manage this a bit with linguistic modeling, but mostly it's just about thinking that this can happen.
So the second thing I want to show is that you now have the ability, so you have to have build permissions to do this, but you can select explore this visual, which will open up a new data exploration and you can actually use this data exploration to, as the name suggests, explore the data. So you have the model on the right-hand side, you have either a matrix or a visual, like you would in a Power BI report, and you can add fields to it. For example, we can add territory, we can add our product category, product type rather. So um, where is the product type? Yeah, here, product type, product subtype, and we could break this down in different ways. So looking at it in the matrix, we could look at it through different kinds of visuals in order to better explore the data. Now, this is a new thing. And why I like this is because you can use the natural language in order to answer a question and you kind of get a starting point on which fields you can use. You can open up the exploration and then you yourself are in the driver's seat and can use that starting point to better explore the data. So you don't have to write a new prompt every time, which is not efficient and could lead to more of these unexpected results. So this is a very logical, natural way of doing things. And I think this actually makes a lot of sense. So the third thing I want to show you, we're going to close and reopen the Copilot pane because the session history is a part of the context. So the third thing I want to show you is this report. It's a single page. It's only giving us sales data. So imagine I'm a user with read permissions. I can still use Copilot to ask questions about this model. Now, let's say the semantic model developer created this model, created the report, published it. Everything's going fine, went on a holiday. While they're on holiday, you know, someone for some reason enables Microsoft Fabric and Copilot. So users can now ask questions of that semantic model. The semantic model creator in this case might not necessarily anticipate that someone could access fields that are not in the report. But they can. For example, if I want to be cheeky, I could say, give me a list of all employees. So if I'm a bad actor and I'm thinking, for example, well, we use sales versus budget in order to determine bonuses. So maybe that bonus data is in this model. And if it doesn't have data security and if it's not hidden, so it's basically free game for Copilot. So I can now ask questions like, what is uh, Anita Gibson's salary. And Copilot will then show me that result. So the lesson here is that if your semantic model has sensitive information that is not protected by data security, then you should not be using it with Copilot to ask data questions. This is not a security flaw of Copilot. This is a flaw in this case of the semantic model. However, if you are new to using Copilot, or if you think that only the fields that people can see in the report are what is going to be exposed, this is incorrect. Ensure that you have the appropriate data security on the sensitive information so that people can't see it. For example, object level security, and then people will not be able to access it in this way. So what if something is not sensitive, but you don't want Copilot to touch it? Well, if you hide fields, then Copilot will also not be able to access them, uh, is my understanding. So if you hide a table, a column, a measure, then users will not be able to ask for it in this ask data experience. So these are three things that I just wanted to show, uh, walking through these changes to the prompts, explorations, and people being able to ask questions of the semantic model for fields that aren't necessarily shown in the report. So hope you found this interesting. Hope you found it useful. This is just from you know my testing that I've been doing today.